Attack on Titan and what I can't stop thinking about. If you don't know the story, I'll give you a quick rundown. The entire human race has been brought to the brink of extinction by large mysterious monsters known as Titans. As a result of these creatures' incredible size and strength, the entire human race now lives behind large protective walls. These walls stand about 50 meters tall, dominating the skyline. The Titans appear to have no other purpose aside from eating humans. They ignore all of the creatures, so their sole reason for existence is to attack and destroy humans. The best way to define these creatures is almost like they're 15 meter tall zombies. However, what I want to talk to you about right now is not so much the anime story, but things I've noticed within it that kind of drive me insane. But don't get me wrong, I actually kind of enjoyed the anime. So these won't come as attacks so much as me just explaining things I've seen. But just so we're clear, humans live on this side, and titans are out here. What bugs me about the wall? The 50 meter fortification that the humans live behind and completely depend on for their protection. A wall of that size is no easy feat of construction. It's impressive that the humans were even able to build such a thing in the time required to save themselves. However, what bugs me about the wall is that it was built with humans having cannon technology in mind. Yet the wall doesn't take that into account. Forts and city fortifications from the last 400 years include cannons in their defense, and most notably their designs include them as well. Changing the walls into basically triangular outcroppings which allow for overlapping fields of fire to increase the number of guns that we brought against an attacker. Yet the large 50 meter wall doesn't take this into account when dealing with titans. The walls do have tracks on top which allow for cannon turrets to be moved around to fight titans with. However, the humans never really use these in a productive manner. Every time the wall is breached, the humans fail to use the wall's height and cannon positions any type of tactical advantage against the titans. Whenever the wall is breached, the humans just abandon the position and run to the next line of defense. Instead of using, using the cannon positions, which have overlapping fields of fire within the urban areas being overrun, they just retreat to the wall after that. And this is done even though the titans never make it to the top of the wall. Any tactical advantage that the humans could use from atop the wall is wasted the second titans get through. And you can't say the, tit the cannons can't fire in both directions. There are tracks on both sides of the wall, and interconnecting tracks would allow cannons to cross over and fire on either side. So you can't say that they can't just fire in on the cities. A likely argument would be that the cannons that point in towards the city would be used to, com to combat any type of urban uprisings against a centralized government within the walls. However, they just don't like fighting titans, apparently. <laughs> this leads me to my next point. Based on the wall's simple three-learning layer defense, the second any type of wall breach occurs, that entire defensive layer is lost. However, the walls do have outcroppings, which are where the settlements were built. These outcroppings sit outside the main defensive layer which doesn't make so much sense considering titans gather around human settlement areas. I guess you could say this was designed intentionally to draw titans away from other parts of the wall, making it more likely any breach could be contained within the urban areas, allowing the, populate, the population in these areas to act as literal human meat shields against attacking titans. But having the population outcroppings outside the main defensive layer just seems counterproductive to preserving lives. Unless you're trying to maximize the amount of variable land within the defensive layers, it really just doesn't make much sense. But this leads to what really bugs me. The second the main defensive layer is breached, the entire living space in between the layers is lost. My first thought when observing this is why wouldn't they have interconnecting walls to prevent the breach from spreading? So that way, the titans would be contained to small modular sections of the inner walls without losing the entire defensive ring. And the benefit of having interconnecting walls would mean you have basically safe moving highways on top of the walls between the interconnecting layers without having to run all the way around like they've been doing in the show, and risking life and limb trying to get to other settlements when you can just go to the wall and walk atop it. Thoris says they sat inside the wall for something like a hundred years doing relatively nothing. Why didn't they for those 100 years have the garrison army building supporting interconnecting walls and maybe support forts just in case there were breaches? When you watch the scout regiments out trying to maneuver in the space between Wall Rose and Wall Maria, there's a hell of a lot of unused space out there. And all of that could be filled with more walls and forts if they wanted to protect themselves. And it's very clear the land wasn't even being used for much of anything. It's only been about five years since the wall fell on the show, and there isn't much evidence of there being farms or other structures like that. So it just doesn't make a lot of sense why they would waste all that space. If you're gonna go all in with a turtle strategy, at least should do it right. The weapons and technology. The next thing I really can't stop thinking about. The cannons in the show don't match with how technologically advanced the humans are. 
The bore loaded cannons on the wall that comprise the bulk of their weapons are not advanced enough to exist alongside their other weapon systems, most notably their principal offensive weapon against the Titans, the 3D maneuvering device. A device of that level of mechanical complexity requires some type of really advanced industrial complex to support it. That's not the most important thing about the 3D moving device, even. It's the weapon's pressurized tanks that power it. The technical level required to produce tanks with such high pressure levels far exceeds the technical level of technology required to build mercury blast cap firearms, which that means breech-loaded cannons. If humans can build pressure tanks with such high operational tolerances, then they should easily have the ability to build brass-cased ammunition. You might consider the argument made in this show that how Titans only have a weak spot on the nape of their neck, and destroying their heads will not kill them. It'll only regenerate within a few minutes. But we know from earlier episodes of the program the Titans can be killed by cannons. It takes a while, but it can be done. So the task of killing a Titan with a better cannon would only be easier if they had better technology, which I find surprising that they wouldn't have. So at first, muzzle-loaded cannons wouldn't be as effective against Titans, but let's consider the fact these people have been sitting behind a wall for 100 years. And at no point did any of these people think there has to be an easier way to kill titans rather than 3D maneuvering devices? It's made clear in the story that people fell into a lull living behind the wall and got lazy behind its relative security. But that doesn't change the fact that scout regiments were constantly leaving during that time. And none of them felt it necessary to improve their equipment or try new weapons in killing titans? They even went as far as to breed new horses capable of outrunning titans and building a fully advanced suspension system for their wagons. What I find even stranger is that no one maybe felt the idea of scaling up the grappling hook gas turbine and powering perhaps a small car with it. But they clearly adapted it in some manner to power the ships, because none of those boats in the story have any type of steam ports or exhaust, and I highly doubt any of the passengers are running on hamster wheels to power it. But nitpicking aside, I actually enjoyed the program, but the argument I would like to put forward is that when people have their backs against a wall, and I mean literally against a wall, they will look for all kinds of new and inventive ideas to fight the enemy with. If you look at the American South during the Civil War, they came up with all kinds of inventive ideas. Notably submarines and even steam-powered machine guns to combat the North. But thank you very much for listening and watching today. I hope you have a fantastic day or evening.